Hi guys and welcome back to 20 Questions With and today's guest you might recognise him from a previous video. So he is a professional Driftmasters driver, he also took me off in his drift car at the Supercrime Hill Fest as well. So please welcome Max. Hi Max, how are you doing? I am doing really good, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. A bit full of cold so excuse the very raspy, horrible voice that everyone's got at the moment. <laughs> it's all good fun. <laughs> But are you ready for your 20 questions? I am ready, yes. Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know now. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start with just a quick 10 quick fire questions. So it's your first initial answer that ever comes to mind. So this is the scary part, don't worry. <laughs> Save it quickly. So first question, your favourite car? Uh, PS13 Nissan Sylvia. <laughs> and your favourite track? Um, ooh. Oh, no, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> Riga in Latvia. Oh, cats or dogs? Uh, dogs. Favourite three-course meal? Whoa, okay. Uh, <laughs> was not expecting that. <laughs> oh, my days. This is what catches everyone out, is the three-course meal one. <laughs> I can't think of a starter. Okay, I think... Uh, bruschetta, uh, then a rack of ribs, and then tiramisu for dessert. Okay, and your most inspirational driver? Ooh. Um, probably James Dean, because he's just the best drifter. And if you had to choose another sport from drifting and motorsport, what would it be? Well, that's a hard one. Um, probably rallying, because it's, it's kind of got some sim similar aspects to it. And are you a morning or evening person? Evening, definitely, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and your go-to hobby that isn't car related? Uh, mountain biking. And the scariest thing you've ever done? Um, driving in Riga, which is very, very fast. <laughs> and if you had to describe yourself in one word, what would that word be? Oh. <laughs> Confused most of the time. <laughs> I like that. Honest. It's nice and honest. <laughs> so there you go. That's the scary part done. That's the quick fire questions. You survived. You made it. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So we'll get into a bit more in depth about your history in motorsport, where you aspire to be, bits and pieces like that, if you're ready. Yep. Perfect. So nice and easy to start with. Where did it all start for you with motorsport and drifting? Uh, so I actually started in go-karting, uh, sort of worked through getting control of a uh, a vehicle I guess and um, then I saw drifting on YouTube and I was like yeah I think I think this is what I want to do and then I started doing it I was like this is definitely what I want to do <laughs> this is fun. Um, and then just carried on from there. So it just kept developing and falling further in love with it? Yeah every time I go out I like I love it even more and I'm learning something new and lot, most of the time and I have a bad day my driving's getting better every time I drive which is nice because you can actually see it which is really good it's a lot more rewarding isn't it when you can see and measure the progress and see it develop because it makes all the hard work worth it in the end yeah 100 percent. okay and over the past few years that you've been getting into drifting what different barriers have you experienced and how have you overcome them so one big thing was for a while um the car wasn't powerful enough yeah so we had the 200 horsepower bmw which was, it was good and it was perfect for learning. And then slowly the, the car, you know, it was staying at the same level, but I was progressing and I was just needing more car. But I think that was a really important step as like going, have like your car's being too slow for you because then as soon as you jump in something with the right amount of power, in drifting that just makes everything easier. Yeah. Whereas in racing, you know, power can make stuff harder, but with drifting power just, you can just, it's just a lot easier to drive when you have loads of power really you can initiate it a lot easier yeah and then you can just keep more wheel speed you don't have to make as many adjustments or with uh, in drifting like if you have a low power car you have to stay exactly on the right line and if you make a mistake then you've made the mistake but if you've got a more powerful car if you make a mistake lots of time you can just plant your foot put out loads of smoke and fix the issue more power solves everything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And just as a bit of a side note, obviously you're only 16, so you can't drive on the roads yet. Have you found right. that um, a bit difficult with the whole drifting side or do you think it's still quite open regardless of age? 
Um, so we've had a few little problems, but it soon became easier when I uh, became known on social media. And I went to a place called Driftland up in Scotland, oh. and they have a, a licensing place. Yeah. So I had got a Driftland license, which was kind of certified that I could drive and I'm not just a little kid with a car. Um, so that, that definitely really helped. And then tracks started to get to know me and go, oh, okay, we can trust Max. Yeah. Like make a bit of a reputation of yourself. Yeah, 100%. Brilliant. And over the years, um, with all your experience in drifting, have you seen any changes? And also, have you seen many changes in regards to how women are respected in driving, especially drifting? Yeah, so there is quite a few female drifters, which is really nice to see. But obviously, we, we always want more people coming into the sport and that there is a lot more men doing it. Um, but there is a lot a lot more women getting into it, which is really, really good to see. I get people messaging me, oh, how do I start? And all that sort of stuff, which is it's really good. And it's, it's changing, definitely. Drifting's going more in a professional direction, yeah. um, which I think is also going to bring more women into the sport, which is great opens it up a lot more and I think as well um Queen Bee when she did her drift series I think that again seeing women involved in it makes you think oh actually I can do this it's nothing stopping me it's just kind of a barrier made in your own head almost whereas seeing other people do it and be involved in it it does open it up for other people I think allows other people to get introduced a bit easier yeah she's a prime example of someone who represents the sport really really well especially getting women into it and Tessa Witter who drives for uh, Driftworks she is also a really good example of someone who should inspire um, women to get into the sport because it's really really fun and people who aren't doing it are definitely missing out because it's just so amazing. I know I know when you took me up the hill it was just smiles and laughter the whole way up it was just absolutely incredible and it is something on my bucket list to have a go at. Yeah, definitely. Any, anyone watching who has a bucket list, it should just have one more thing on it now, which is go in a drift car and put out loads of smoke and have some fun. Yeah, nothing more fun than burning a lot of rubber and having, doing donuts, even just down to like donuts and have just doing what a car shouldn't actually be doing. It's just something about it is really good fun. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Breaking traction is what I live for now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who needs traction control on? <laughs> So moving on from that, um, like you say, obviously only being 16, are you excited to get out on the roads? And do you think your background in motorsport is going to help you pass a little bit easier, do you reckon? Or do you reckon it'll make it a little bit harder? Well, um, I've asked my dad and anyone in the car with me when I'm driving to pick up on any little mistakes that I'm making so I don't get into any bad habits. And I, I think I should be okay, but I don't have a car with a handbrake at the minute. They just all have the hydraulic handbrake, so... I'll need to get used to that because I've driven other cars and left the handbrake on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think once I get over that barrier, you know, I learn about indicators because none of my cars have indicators. <laughs> and a few little bits sorted. It should, it should be all right because I can do the actual driving bit. It's just yeah. theory and learning indicators and lanes and stuff like that. And having cars coming towards you. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. I mean, I, to be fair, driving in the pits can be a lot like you know, driving on the road, but obviously on a, a much, much smaller scale. But <laughs> fingers crossed I'll be all right. I'm really excited to get on the road because I can just get my freedom and go places, go to car events and, you know, hope that I can get insured on my dad's van so then if he's not very well or he doesn't feel like coming to a drift day, I can just go on my own. And um, so I have a lot more freedom there or if he's working or something like that. There's so many things that will open up so many doors. So I'm excited for that. Definitely. And now with the laws changing next week as well, you'll be able to tow if, when you pass your test. Yeah, that'll be really, really nice. I mean, I was, I was going to do the, the license when I passed anyway, but I'll just make it a little bit easier that I don't have to. Yeah, save, saves a bit of money as well. More money for tyres. <laughs> yeah, more, more money for shredding. <laughs> That's brilliant. And so with a drift car, obviously they're completely different to what I'm used to with, with um, road car and track cars. So what actually makes a good drift car? So lots of people think that drift cars don't have any grip, so they can break traction, but it's actually more the ratio of power to grip. Yeah. So we just have a stupid amount of power. Lots of cars that I'm going against have a thousand horsepower, which ah. is just a lot going to two wheels at the back. Um, and then another thing that kind of differentiates them is 
suspension setups we have on them. Yeah. So base, if you put a 50B coin next to my back tire and I went full lock and turned, I could literally draw the outside of that 50P coin. That's how much lock we have. Bye. So they're very really useful around the town. Um, but yeah, it's mainly just, you know, drift suspension, the way that the cars are lined and set up and having too much power as well. That's amazing. So like I say, it's completely different. Cause like you say, a lot of people think to drift, you don't want any traction, but you need some to keep the front wheels in place, keep it planted, have that bit of play. But it's so fascinating because it's so different to what I'm used to. <laughs> I'm used to all yeah. the wheels in the same way. <laughs> I feel like if I got the PS13 now and I, you know, maybe I could grip it up and it would be a wonderful grip car because we've got such adjustable suspension that that car will be grippy at a thousand horsepower. Yeah. But once you go like 1,200 horsepower or something like that, the car will just about drift. So you can make the car as grippy as you want it. Um, but like, if for example, I had 200 horsepower in the car, it wouldn't drift at all. Yeah. Um, but now it's got like 600 at the minute. It, it works pretty well. That's great. Because it's all, if I'm correct, it's all about unsettling the car, isn't it? To get it yeah. to, to step out. So like, it's why you guys use the handbrakes a lot and all that side of things, isn't it? I sound like such a complete novice about drifting. Yeah. I can no, do you're it. Exactly, you're right. <laughs> yeah. So essentially if you unsettle the car, until it breaks traction and then you've got to settle it again once you're like in a slide which is something that is a big big learning curve especially if you do grip racing i mean when i came up karting uh, or when i've taught people how to drift it's like they break traction but then they don't let go of the wheel but you have to let go of the wheel <laughs> which is like driving 101 do not do that um, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it breaks all the rules but once you've learned it it's just it's crazy I think that's one thing with those that have had all that experience on the road and on tracks and normal circuit racing. Drifting is the complete opposite. Like say if on track your back end starts to step out, you gently lift off and catch it and let it go. Whereas in drifting, power down and away you go. So it's completely against what your brain's telling you you should be doing. So it's a lot to process, definitely. Yeah, I did a day racing um, maybe a couple of months ago now. Um, and... The, I had someone training me and they were saying like I can see that you're doing drifting because like my hands were all over the wheel and when I was entering the cars into the corner it was like so aggressive and they were like just need to tone it back it can be nice and smooth <laughs> and I'm like it's completely goes against everything I've been doing for like the past three years. They are completely opposite disciplines aren't they because like say circuit racing smooth is fast whereas drifting is aggressive it's harsh you've got to unbalance it unsettle it it's two complete disciplines, but just as a bit of um, an extra question, really, do you think they help one another? So being a circuit racer, having a go at drifting, do you think it helps and vice versa? Yeah, 100%. I'd say it helps more if you're in grip racing and you do drifting yeah. more than if you, you know, if you're a drifter and you do grip racing. But I think that they definitely help each other out. Um, and I'm not there yet, but I'd love to be, Good at both yeah um, like I've done some some grip racing and I, I do really really enjoy it and I'm hoping to do some more soon that'll be really really fun um but yeah I can I can look at my car now and I'm thinking I need to take that on the track definitely get some slicks on the back and just nail it around it's yeah but there's some similarities but lots of it is completely different but I feel like if you could master both of them then you'd be an ultimate driver Definitely. I feel like we need to make a pact where I'll help you with circuit racing if you help me with drifting. I think I think that could be arranged, definitely. Yeah, it's a good pact. It'll make a good video as well, so vice versa. Yeah, some really cool content would happen there. Yeah, I like that idea. It's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> so You've said it. It's going to happen. It is. We're going to make it happen. We'll get you out in the little clear around Cadwell and we'll see how you get on. <laughs> we'll leave that with your back end stepping out too much, so you should be okay in that. <laughs> But moving slightly on, um, what has actually been your favourite memory out of all of your time in motorsport? Oh, that's a really difficult question. I think last year um, was my first like big year in drift competition. So I did grassroots and then last year was like, here we go. Um, so I got accepted into the British Drift Championship um, as a wildcard driver. So I was already kind of like 
okay, I've only just been let in here. <laughs> um, and then I won my first event and my second event. I was like, okay, here we go, this is it. <laughs> um, and just at the end of the second event, I was just so happy and like all the, all the team, which is, there's not a lot of us, it's just like my dad and a couple of friends. Yeah. Um, just came over and like threw me up in the air and it was just such an amazing feeling. I was covered in champagne. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. I was like, how did I manage to do this? Um, I was, yeah, that's probably, probably my highlight. I mean, all the drivers gave me such a good fight and I was like, it, lots of the battles are really, really close. Yeah. Um, but just made it through and managed to win. It was, it was just amazing because I've been seeing the championship for, since I'd got into drifting, the British Drift Championship were like the championship that I want to be in. It was like, it seemed like it was years away and it came so fast. And I was like, wow, okay, that was so much Thank fun. You <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's amazing. And looking now into the future, um, what are your current aspirations? What are you working towards? What do you want to achieve out of all this? So a big thing aside from competition drifting is the respect of doing cool promo stuff. Yeah. So I definitely want to make some really cool videos of maybe like closing down the streets and doing something like that, or just some yeah. great big projects like that is something I really, really look forward to doing because as like doing my YouTube videos and stuff, creating content is what I like doing and sharing, sharing the awesomeness of drifting. Yeah. Um, but as far as competition goes, I'd love to win Drift Masters, which is European championship. I'm in now. Um, and I'd also love to go to America and Japan uh, and do some drifting in those places as well. So got a nice little bucket list to tick off. Yeah, I think there's nearly endless possibilities of things I could do. Um, like James Dean, who's, as I said, he's the best in the world at the minute. He hasn't even done all of these things and won all of these things. Um, so, and he's been drifting for quite a while. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff to do um, that should hopefully just fill the rest of my life with traveling and drifting fingers crossed well you've got plenty of time to achieve it all anyway <laughs> yeah i mean i'm i'm looking forward to the rest of my drifting career oh fantastic and so when looking at drifting what do you reckon are the top three skills someone needs to make it as a good drifter uh so skills to make it as a, a good drifter is you've got to have the driving aspect has definitely got to be there um, obviously you can't you, you can actually do get quite far with drifting without being you know absolutely amazing jaw dropping but um, like if if the more you drift the better you get yeah. so another thing you need is a lot of kind of ambition and determination because there's so much preparation you can put like you know 20 hours in on the car and get an hour out of it because they're just yeah. not made to drift so it's like my my life like now this year especially with covid and stuff it's been like 10 percent driving nine percent promo getting the car fixed all that sort of stuff yeah so you've definitely got to be prepared to put loads of work in and then drive <laughs> like that much yeah but if you if you don't want to do competition obviously that's a bit different and um, because you can just get a reliable car and just go and drive it and it's, it's not as it's not as um, heavy on doing other work um, and then Another thing which is vital is doing stuff on social media, which luckily for me, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, but like, you don't even have to do YouTube. YouTube's a super hard game at the minute. But like yeah. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, yeah. they're all yeah. kind of going up there. And if you're just posting on that, everyone loves to watch drifting. So if you post on it, people are going to watch it. People are fascinated by it, aren't they? Yeah, 100%. It's the fastest growing motorsport in the world at the minute. And it's, there's a reason why it's because it's just so exciting. It is. It's so different. Uh, it's like, oh, there's a load of smoke. What's going on here then? And people get so enticed into it and more about it. It's very, I try to think of the right word, almost addictive. Yeah, it's, I'd say addictive is definitely a word, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> for the bank balance, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but, but for the smiles, you know, it's definitely worth it. It's all worth it. And moving on to the very last question, for anyone out there, male, female, 16, 60, who's looking at getting into drifting and wants to have a go, whether it be for a bit of fun or for competition, what is your best advice for them? The best advice I could probably give someone 
is get seat time. You see so many people going into competition who haven't done loads of drift days and you can see it in their driving. They might be good. They might win a few battles, but I drove for a year before I started doing grassroots competition. And I think that was a vital part of me learning how to drift because I got out nearly every weekend I could in the car. And I'm really lucky that my dad supported me with that. I mean, I have so much respect for him for trailering my car around and helping me out. But getting out in that car every weekend, and even if you've not got anyone to train you, just going out on your own, I've learned so much on my own, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, get out in the car and also have fun. It's hard not to have fun when drifting, but you can, you can always have a bad day, whatever you're doing. But if you keep it fun, you'll keep learning. And yeah, it's, it's all about fun at the end of the day. It's trying to take things on the chin, isn't it? Because I think across, well, anything you do, if you're having a day where something's not quite working, for example, if you're trying to drift and you keep spinning, if you get more annoyed with it, it's going to keep happening. Whereas if you think of it as a, okay, I'm doing this wrong, how can I learn from this? And that sort of approach, it's more fun. You're going to improve more and just have a bit of a better time than getting frustrated and annoyed. Yeah, 100%. And even, even when you are spinning out, I remember when I was spinning out every lap and I was getting annoyed until a point when I thought, hang on, let's just have fun. Even when I spin out, it's crazy being out of control anyway. It's kind of fun. <laughs> so I had like half a day where I was like, oh, this is going, not going very well. And I found that when I started to have fun, I just started getting better. Yeah. And it happened in that order. It, it wasn't like I managed not to spin out and then I was happier. I was like, I was trying to be happier and then I managed not to spin out. It's crazy how it works. Works hand in hand. Yeah, 100%. But there we go. You've survived the 20 questions. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I need to get like either little stickers or medals or something for everyone that completes this. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good fun. Thank you so much. Right. Well, again, thank you ever so much for being a guest. I'll pop your channel links down below for everyone that wants to check you out. There's some awesome content out there. And it's just what an experience when I went out in the car with you. And we definitely need to get something sorted in the future. But thank you again, Max, for being my guest. Um, but you guys know the drill to make my journey your journey. Like, follow, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.